There is FaceTime and Google Hangouts and Facebook and Snapchat and email and texting and the list goes on. Yeah, they're all great 21st century means of communicating when used properly. But they can also lead you down a dangerous path when they're used improperly. Joining us today is Scott Driscoll. He is the head of Internet Safety Concepts. Welcome so much for being here. Glad to be back. And we said that this is a conversation that's not always pleasant to talk about, but this is something that needs to be talked about. Absolutely. And it's got to start at an early age. Uh, when sexting first came out, it's the sharing of the explicit photos. We know what sexting is. It's the sharing of the dirty photos photos, the private photos, through our text technology. When it first came out, it was a teenager, a college issue. In my opinion, it's a community issue now because we're dropping in such an age. We're handing our children these devices with unlimited access to the world, and some of our kids are impulsive. When I was a teenager and I was going through puberty and I was having those feelings, if someone said, hey, send me a picture, my impulsivity might say, okay, this person likes me. We're seeing a huge increase mm. in the number of kids using it but we're also seeing a decrease in how how young they are when they start you said you've you've actually gotten as young as issues with sexting nine years old um, mm. I train police officers throughout the state of Connecticut and I get a lot of phone calls just asking for advice because this is something we let some police officers don't deal with every day and right now uh, nine years old and involved in it where they might take a picture of a private part and send it or something uh, the officers describe it as pictures they'll never get out of their head and I used to mm. investigate child pornography cases so I understand exactly what those officers mean and it's something that we have to be serious about and understand this happens. We also have a law here in Connecticut that only affects our children when it comes to sexting. What are the laws in Connecticut? Well, right now for our children, if they're between the ages of 13 and 18 and they receive a picture that is child pornography, and what makes a picture child pornography in the state, it's the age of the person, the body parts, how they're exposed. Each picture has to be looked at independently. And through my investigations and my experience, pictures fall into one of three categories. They're good they're inappropriate or they're illegal. Mm -hmm. This this law only affects the illegal pictures. Okay. So if our child receives it and it's from the person who took the picture, our children have two choices, delete it immediately or turn it over to the cops. What That's kind of it. an impact does sexting have? Sexting has a huge impact on our world, not just for the cyberbullying, because what happens is with our technology, we can screenshot it. And a lot of times these pictures start off with private. Send me a private picture, it'll disappear. Programs like no, Snapchat and Instagram, they think it disappears, but it doesn't. It doesn't? So these pic no, it no. doesn't, absolutely not. No, so kids, if you're listening, let's be clear, it does not disappear. With screenshots and with replays, you can take possession of someone's private picture. So then it goes around the schools, the cyberbullying, and the digital footprint. A lot of people think it's funny that if I don't like that person anymore, I break up with someone, I throw it mm -hmm. onto a... a a website, I hashtag their name, that now follows you forever. So when you go to apply for a scholarship or a job, mm -hmm. that picture is going to come back. And I've worked cases 12 years ago, their pictures are still part of Google Images mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So that's why I take it seriously and I was happy to come out and talk about this because I don't think sometimes parents are aware of just how readily it happens. It's happening in our schools. Or young day. adults when you're out there, all the millennials are taking pictures of everything. Absolutely. And the question is, do you want that picture to end up uh, public. What I'm trying to do is we use technology. Tech, like we said, technology is a positive thing. I love having a camera in my phone. It's the appropriateness, so I think about it. So some of the things that I'm trying to talk to parents about is talk to our kids openly about sexting, what it is, and some of the warning signs. If someone asks us for a private picture, that should be warning signs going off. If, so, if an adult asks a child for a picture, that should there should be no way. So we have to know who we're communicating with, and we have to make sure that we're using this with safety in mind every single time. And remember, it never, goes, never away. goes away. I don't care what the thing says. They did. We did a story last week, I think, right here on CBS News, where they took people's cell phones and recovered it, and they found out half the information that they had on there, pictures, everything, which they thought went away. They threw the phones away, and they were back. Once, once you add technology into it, there's a digital footprint that doesn't go away. So how do we protect our children? Well, one of the things I think is very is, is open communication, talking to our kids. But I also think that our kids have to be mature enough to handle the devices. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, as parents, have to give our kids every latest and greatest bell and whistle when it comes to technology. Mm. They have to, in my opinion, earn it through respect, through proper usage, and we do that. Also, other things we can do is discuss it. I think it's important for our parents to discuss sexting with our kids and know the warning signs. Hey, if someone asks for a pic private picture, come to me. I'm your parent. Talk to me. I don't think anybody should be sending a picture that makes them feel uncomfortable. No matter what it is from a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or an adult, we should not be making it. Uh, you should not be taking anything that's uncomfortable. And what I tell the kids is, right before you take the picture, let's prevent it. I want them to ask themselves, is this picture safe? 
And that's an acronym. That's an acronym I've come up with, and it's a quick little reminder right before we take the picture, just ask yourself, am I sure this picture is appropriate for everyone? If our children's first thought is, I hope my parents never see this picture, mm -hmm. I challenge them. Put the phone down, talk to a, a trusted adult, talk about it. If it is a good picture, use technology for what it's worth. But if our first thought is, I hope people don't see this, maybe that's not the right picture when to When in doubt, don't. Exactly. Or right. check it out. The problem is, talk sometimes home. kids just don't have the same doubt, so we have to talk. And they're impulsive, and it's easy to, easy to fall into this. That's why I think it's important for them to know about it. Thank you, Scott. We appreciate My that. My pleasure. Anytime. Right. For more helpful information about internet safety or to talk to Scott about doing a presentation for you, you can head to his website. It's internetsafetyconcepts.com. When your kids argue with you about what they can have, you just point them to that website.